Bless us, Father, in Jesus' name, as we minister the word of God. Save the soul that's near as hell. Keep us, O oh God, in your will. May we do no damage to the word of the Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Saved by hope. I was talking to the wife of a gentleman that I was doing business with just a few days ago. And uh, his wife uh, is a missionary. And she had done missionary work um, in the Amazon River Basin. Uh, Amazon River in Brazil. All those villages and places. And she said that the difference was day and night between the villages, between those that had been evangelized and Christianized and those who had not yet heard the message of Jesus Christ. She said the villages that had been Christianized were well kept, they were peaceful, and they were organized. And she said, they were clean. But those villages that had not yet been evangelized, had not yet been Christianized, were filthy. She said, liquor bottles piled up everywhere. Violence in the communities. She said, Animal feces and wastes all over the place. She described the vileness of those areas where people had not heard the message of Jesus Christ. And then she said this, and when she said it, she got my undivided attention. She said, hope makes all of the difference. And I said, what did you say? She said, hope. And I told her, I said, you know, I'm preaching about Hope Sunday. Tell me more. And she began to share with me how they worship a bull god on some of those islands. And, and there you have it. Strong, rich witchcraft, and, and you know what's coming next, child sacrifice. Offering their children to the devil. And shared how one woman was demon-possessed, demon-possessed, and how they collectively prayed for her. And that demon-possessed woman we could see the demons in our eyes and uh, a fearful sight to see, like something we would see from a Hollywood movie. How, in the name of Jesus, that demon was cast out, and how that woman went skipping and jumping back home. And every place where Christ was preached, hope. Came into the hearts of the people. Where there is no hope, there can be no endeavor. Hope in Christ raised their standard of living. They had no reason to clean up. They lived amongst filth because they were living amongst in a hopeless state. Most of us can't relate to village, villages that way because most of us, whether we know Jesus or not, we've grown up in a world where Christianity has been the dominant influence on our culture. 
the Judeo-Christian concept, the Judeo-Christian ethic is what has made Western civilization and our Western culture possible. It explains the American standard of living. Just of late, uh, people have said that Christianity had nothing to do with America's founding, and this has never been a Christian uh, country and all that. I think I trust the writings of the people who lived back then, who, who, uh, who, who wrote during the nation's founding. I trust their writings more than I do someone born in 1960 who just come along and he has a new take on what has been established down through the years. And I thank God for the influence of Christianity on our society, for it has greatly blessed us all. Hope gives people a reason to live. Hope gives, it gave those people on that island something to look forward to. Yes, hope. Hope is the consistency of faith, Calvin said. That is, hope is the firmness of faith. You can't maintain your faith. You can't keep believing that God's going to heal you or that a better day is coming or that something's going to change without hope. Hope is the stability of faith. Where there is no hope, there is no faith. The Hebrew writer didn't give the definition of faith, but he gave us faith's description. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the confident expectation that one will get what they hope for. And the desire and the belief that they will get it even though they don't see how. You can't make it without hope. Amen. Aristotle said that hope is a walking dream. Herbert said, he that lives in hope danceth without music. Hopeful people are optimistic people. Hopeful people. People who have hope in Christ have, they live with a soundtrack playing at all times. And they hear music where there is none. They dance when other people mourn. They have a joy when others are sad. And when you are a hopeful individual, praise the Lord, there is a certain uh, melody. There is a certain spark in your eye. This is why when you talk to little children, third grade, second grade, sometimes fourth grade, fifth grade, what do you want to be? Oh, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be the president. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. Their eyes are filled with possibilities. Filled with hope. Filled with glee. Amen. Excited about what they can become. Sometimes, more often than not, you talk to that same kid by the time they're about to graduate. You ask them the same question. Many times the answer is, it's not even pronounced right. Nothing. The, the TH is gone. Not, not nothing, nothing. I don't know why you ask that. They allowed something or someone to come in and rob them of their hope. And you know what happens? It's they settle for too little. What's well, amazing to me what people settle for. 
what you could become versus what you become. The potential that you have as a young African-American male in this country versus the degree to which you realize that potential. It's often, it is often uh, puzzling how sometimes those who have everything going for them squander that and are satisfied living beneath their privilege. Romans 12 and 12, the A clause says that, says rejoicing in hope. That is, be joyful in hope. In Zechariah, those who had a blood covenant with God were called prisoners of hope. Zechariah 9 and 12, they're called prisoners of hope. Of hope. Do I have any prisoners of hope in here? Amen. The, the prisoners of hope are people who will who will hope against hope. When a thing seems hopeless, the prisoner of hope can't help but somehow have hope. In fact, the whole Bible was written to build our hope in Christ. Bible says in Romans 15 and 4, for what things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That book in your lap that I told you uh, Thursday night is perfection. If you ever want to find perfection, just grab hold of your Bible. That book was compiled that we might have hope. Not hope in hope, but hope in Christ. That through the patience and, 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 and comfort of the scriptures, that we might have hope. And one of the things about hope in Christ is that Christ won't disappoint you. The Bible says in Romans uh, uh, chapter 5, says... Uh, that we glory in tribulation. Well, actually, chapter 5, verse 1, let's start with it. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access. Look at that. By faith into his grace. That is, uh, through Christ, we've been introduced to God the Father. Amen. Amen. And wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. The glory of God is a reference to a specific thing. That when the Lord shall come and set everything aright. Oh, that we will be a part of it. And then that is a glory. That is a glory that takes place on this earth in our lives as we serve the Lord. God glorifies his servants. Amen. The Bible teaches that he beautifies the meek with salvation. God's beauty secrets are more powerful than max factors. He, he will defeat Clinique and uh, all the rest of them every time. You can put on all that stuff, but if God's glory is missing, you look dark. Amen. You you got on that. Uh, you, uh, what's some of the what's that, that that new one? Mac. Yeah, Mac, and all the rest of them. You got Mac, John, all of them. But without the glory of God, something is missing. The Bible teaches, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And that patience gives us experience. Experience there is character. Amen. Character is built when life whoops you a little bit. Go through some of life, a situation, bro, pull it in. That builds our character because life is filled with hard knocks. Hard knocks and bruises. But if you hold on, it will bless you. And then experience gives us hope. And look at this, and hope maketh not ashamed. That is, hope in Christ does not disappoint. If your trust is in him, if your hope is in him, 
he will come through every time. One way or the other. I like what Harville uh, said about this subject. He says, hope is not the conviction that something will turn out well, but the certainty, the certainty that something makes sense regardless to how it turns out. I love that because the truth is in life, every situation doesn't come to a happy ending. Sometimes as we have faith for our loved ones while they're sick, sometimes they die. Sometimes while, as we hold out for God to keep us employed, you still get a pink slip. Am I right? Sometimes despite our best efforts and our faith in the Lord, things don't, don't work out the way we want them to. But here's what hope does. Hope will cause you, if you keep your faith in the Lord, even though you didn't get the answer that you wanted, you will at least understand why God didn't do it the way we wanted him to do it. And then we see that it was better that the Lord allowed it to work out the way that it did versus the way that we wanted. That's what hope does. It reassures us that whatever the outcome, whatever the outcome, the Lord has our best interest in mind. I'm glad of that because, see, uh, so many times, you know, we, we stand people up and we give examples of how, of what happened when it worked out. And then there are people who are sitting there saying, well, he didn't heal me. He didn't, he, he didn't spare my mother. For everybody who testifies that God healed my mama, there's somebody sitting there saying God didn't heal mine. For everyone who's in here saying the Lord healed my husband, there's someone in here saying, well, he let mine die. Well, both parties can walk in the same peace and have the same joy and shout to the same music if both have hope. For those who suffer the loss, hope helps them to see down the road that God knows what he's doing. And even though he didn't do it the way I wanted him to do it, he's still God. He's still God. And he's still worthy of my praise and worthy of my faithfulness and worthy of my song. That's what hope does. It, have, it causes things to make sense regardless to how it turns out. Famous uh, singing group said Jesus will never say no. That's not true. The Lord says no. Amen. He doesn't always give us what we want. But I tell you what he always does. He always does what's best for us. Praise the Lord. He always has our best interest in mind. And sometimes you have to, you have to admit that there are times when you say, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. And Lord, I don't even know if I agree with what you're doing. But here's what I know. Hope causes me to trust in what you're doing. Because you are God and I am not. He knows. Somebody picked up the song and said, we are oft, often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber days and howling tempers often blocks the bright sunshine. But in that land of restless days, we'll understand it better by and by. By and by as time passes, when the morning comes. When all the saints of God are gathered home, we'll tell the story how we overcome and we'll understand it better by and by. Hope keeps you. Praise the Lord. Hope gives you the power to cope when things, praise the Lord, don't go right. Hope is not today, today saints, hope is not a luxury. Hope is a necessity. Proverbs 13 and 12 says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Show me a hopeless person, I'll show you a down person. I'll show you a depressed person. I'll show you a miserable person. I'll show you a pessimistic person. I'll show you a censorous individual. I'll show you a murmurer and a complainer. And I'll show you somebody that nobody wants to be around. Because when hope is gone, sickness is present. Praise the Lord. The psychologist will tell you that hope, the, the hopelessness uh, is pathological. 
Hopeless people are sick people. You can't stay in a hopeless state for long. It says hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. That is, that B clause says, but when hope comes back, or when hope is present, hope is like a tree of life. Hope, hope makes you think. Hope gives you power to imagine, power to invent. Power to live, power to come up with ideas. Praise the Lord. If this don't work, then we'll try that. If that doesn't work, we'll try this. And I've been through this, that, and the other, but I, I still have things going on in my mind because I'm believing God for a brighter day. So hope changes things. Amen. And, and let me tell you, you don't hang around folk who rob you of your hope. The devil, the devil don't have to get you to drink. Satan don't have to get you to commit fornication, adultery, or uh, to, to, to do any of those things. All he has to do is rob you of your hope. If he robs you of your hope, he breaks your spirit. I know when you're hopeless, you can't say amen. Oh, I know when a person is hopeless, they can't lift their hands. When hope is gone, there's no wagging of the head and there's no sparkling of the eye. When hope is gone, if hope takes you from being a praiser to a mannequin. When you lose your hope, you lose your joy. My, 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 my. Somebody shout hope. hope. Paul said we are saved by hope. Word that saved, salvation. Listen, not just born again. We can't limit it to being born again as, as, as important as that is. But that word save, so, 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 the first definition is delivered from, it is temporal and material deliverances. If you're in a quandary, if there is a surgery planned, if there's a problem, hope gets you through before it even gets started. Hope begins to show you how. Oh my, you got in trouble with the IRS. Woo, got behind on your taxes. You're in a, in a hole, your, your, your whole life is in the red. You don't even like to wear, you don't even like to wear, wear red anymore because your life is in the red. But if you could just get some hope, hope will show you which credit cards to tear up Hope will give you a budget. Hope will put you on a payment plan and you see yourself coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Maybe slowly, but surely. Hope. Somebody ought to shout today, I have hope. Hope heals a broken heart. Yes, sir. It won't let you stay there. It will not allow you to stay there on a stupor, having a pity party. Have you noticed that they're not well attended? People don't show up. People stay home. Hope will get you out of that situation, and it will get you delivered. And when I see people, Brother Davis, when I see people who have that indomitable spirit, praise the Lord, like yourself, when I see people like that, you know what I know? I recognize I'm looking at folk who are full of hope. Folk who are saying hope keeps you from quitting. My God, uh, there, there are times when life, when life delivers a blow. And life blows all the time, aren't fair. They're not fair, they're not fair. And you sit there, you sit there and you say, oh how unfair, how wrong, why me? And after all that, when you, when you get through all that hope, Hope goes a knocking, and you know what hope says? Hope says, let's do something about it. Hope says, don't stay here. Amen. Hope says, you can still rise again. Hope, praise the Lord, takes the open hand, and you know what hope does? It balls up the fist because hope puts fight back in you. God Almighty, somebody today ought to ask the Lord, fill me with hope. Ah! Yes, sir. Hope will get you delivered from danger. Of course, hope gives us eternal salvation. 
granted by God. I mean, hope calls us to be saved. That is eternal salvation, but, but it's also deliverance. And it's the future deliverance for the saints. We are saved by hope. Amen. Hope, in short, is desire of some good uh, with the expectation of obtaining it. It is the desire of some good. Something good's going to happen with the expectation of obtaining it. Wherever you are today in life, don't you let the devil rob you of your desire for something good to come your way. And hope will call you to believe that even though I can't see how I'm going to get it, I'm going to get there. You can't rob me. You can't stop me. I don't know how, but the Lord is going to make a way. Somebody with hope, praise the Lord with your hopeful hands and your hopeful voice. Yeah! If you have hope, let me see you wave your hand. Wave your hand. Hope will. It'll, it'll get you up. Because you look, you're looking for something better. You're expecting something better. And I tell you, when people live without expectation, they show up late all the time. They stay in bed all day. They, they can't maintain a job. And if they do work, there's no oomph. There's no joy. There's no spark. But for those who have hope, hope will have you stuck in traffic on your way to work. Praise the Lord. And while you're sitting there, the car next to you, they, they notice you. There you go with a bop in your head, a praise in your hands. There's something going on. Because even though you may not be moving, you're still on your way. Yeah! Hope is the conviction that I'm on my way. You may not see me moving. You may not feel it moving. It may be sta it may be stationary, but I'm still on my way because even though I'm at a standstill, I see God working it out for me. I see the Lord working behind the scenes and I have expectation. I believe that a brighter day is coming. If you have hope today, praise the Lord like you're full of hope. Thank you. Thank you. See you, I can't give you my hope. Because in some cases, all I got left is hope. Lost my money. Lost my home. Lost this. Lost that. There are people in here. Lost my health. Lost this. Lost that. But I'm not a loss. I'm not a loser. Because there's one thing that I haven't lost yet. I haven't lost my hope. It's the fourth quarter. I'm on my own one yard line. I got 99 yards to go, but I believe that I can make it. I believe that I can take it. Oh, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have any folk in here who still believe and you're Feel with hope. What do you believe? I believe that the Lord will make a way somehow. Yeah! Yeah, Lord! Woo! Won't it get you up? Won't hope make you shout? Won't hope in Jesus? Won't it give you joy? Doesn't it give you power to keep going? Somebody may look at you and say, why are you going? You tell them I'm hoping for a brighter day. There's a brighter day coming. Somebody said that hope is the poor man's bread. 
may not have any, may not have any bread on the table, but you find yourself chewing, smacking. What am I eating? I'm eating hope. Because if I have hope, hope will give me the wherewithal I need to get a loaf of bread. Hope will give me the wherewithal I need to get out of this hole because the Lord is on my side because Jesus is with me. Now I heard Paul say, let me exegete here. Paul said, we're saved by hope. We're saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. What does you mean? What do you mean, preacher? Here's the understanding. The mystery lies in the meaning of the word see. See here is not used as in sight, but see is used as in having. You see, if it's already happened and you already have it, then there's nothing for you to hope for because you've obtained that already. You're wearing that gray suit with that black tie and that white shirt. You don't hope for it. You already have it. But there is something else. Somebody ought to shout, there's something else. There is something else that I'm hoping for. See, hope deals with that which is beyond your reach. What, what a man seeth, why does he hope for it? But if we see, but if we hope for what we see not, if we keep faith for what we have not obtained yet, then we with patience, we do wait for it. That is, we wait on the law and we are of good courage. We haven't gotten there yet, but that's all right. We're on our way. Do I have five people here who's waiting on the Lord to do something for them? You haven't seen it yet. That is, you haven't obtained it yet. It hadn't happened yet, but you're up with patience waiting for it. Well, why are you with patience waiting for it? Give the Lord a dance. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a shuffle of your feet. Be a waiter for Jesus Christ. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Yeah! to God. Huh? And then I heard him. Let me close. I, I ain't preaching. I'm, uh, I'm going to preach long today. But then I heard him. I heard him say when, when hope, just like hope gives you, just like hope gives you strength. Uh, then I heard him and say you got another partner somebody else working with you. Mm -hmm. Someone else working with you to deal with the sufferings of this present time. That's what it's about now. The everyday up and downs of this life. You got hope that won't let you give up. But thank God, hope is not the only thing that's working for you. Hope to see God bring you out is not the only thing that's working for you. The big picture, hope in the glorification of the saints is not the only thing that's working for you. There is someone else working for you and it works the same way hope does. In addition to hope, the spirit help with our infirmities. We don't, just, we don't just have hope, but we have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives us power to deal with our human limitations. The Holy Ghost gives us power to deal with, good God Almighty, our fallen humanity. For we all go through, and the Holy Ghost gives us.
gives us power. Now, how does he help us? How? 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 We're going down for this rocket. For the Bible says, that's my grandson. Let him preach. Let him preach. He preach. He's, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. And look. See, I got some new preachers already. Look at God. Him and Faison. No, that's Ferguson. That's right. Got some new preachers. Let him preach. Let me tell you something. And notice what they're learning. God is good, isn't he? Here's, here's how the Holy Ghost helps us. And the Holy Ghost is brilliant. He's brilliant. Oh, Holy Ghost, thank you. He says, for we know not what to pray for. Let me read it now. We know not, we know not what to pray for as we are. Now, it didn't say that we don't know the art of prayer. It didn't say that we didn't know how to pray. Now, that's something to be said for knowing how. The, that's, the, that's the art of prayer. But beyond the art of prayer, more important, see, now more important than the art of prayer is the what of prayer. Now, if I had to choose between the two, mastering the art or knowing what to say to God, I'd go with the what. Now, I'm glad he can, he can bless you to have the how and the what. But he says here, we know not what to pray for. Now, how, I said, Lord, now, what's the best way for me to get the people to see this? And he gave me a simple, simple, simple analogy. Let's say you're the newbie on a job. You just got hired. You know nothing about that job. It's your first day. Okay? And <laughs> let them preach. And you ask questions on the job. But you don't know anything about the job. Okay? You know what else you don't know? You don't know the right questions to ask. You don't know what you should inquire into or not. But the experienced people, they know that you're asking questions, but you're asking the wrong question. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Many times we talk to God about things, and the Holy Spirit is standing there saying, Father, they're talking to you about the wrong stuff. Yes, sir. She's praying about that sore on her foot. When what she should be praying about is that person who's going to be influenced after I heal her foot, but she don't know that. So she's sincere in talking about the sore on her foot because she's human and humans are limited. He's praying about his wayward child, but he really, Father, shouldn't be talking to you about the wayward child. But the reason he's talking about the wayward child is because that's all he knows. He thinks, and he's sincere, Father, that that's the what he should be talking to you about. But, Father, let me, through groanings and moanings, which cannot be uttered, communicate with you what she or he should be talking to you about in the first place. So while we're over here, we mean right, we're in left field talking to God about what we know. Oh, God, Lord, heal me, Lord, this, Lord, that. The Holy Spirit is saying, Father, let me help him. See, he helps our infirmity. Let me help him. Let me help him and the Holy Spirit. Through groanings. And the groanings which cannot be uttered is not speaking in tongues. 
<clears throat> this is the language of the Spirit and the Father. Because notice what it says. It's talking of the Godhead. He that knoweth the mind of the Spirit. See, the next verse tells about, go, he, he goes a little higher. It says, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. See, he that searcheth the heart, that's God, that's Christ. He knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit makes intercessions for us. Even while we're interceding for ourselves, even while we're praying, and this, this, this by no means saying don't pray. You should pray all that you know to pray. But know why you're praying, that all you're praying is all that you know. But don't assume that that's all that there is. The Holy Ghost knows exactly what should be said to the Father. And so you know what he does? He interferes. He intercedes on our behalf and says, uh, uh, Father, Father, what, they, what, what they're really, what they're, what they're trying to say is, that, I, I, I know, I know, she's concentrating on her little boy or her little girl, I know. Uh, when and when when you ought to be praying about this thing way over here. So let me talk to you about this thing. Because see this other thing that they're worried about and been out of shape about, that's already fixed. But they don't know it. See, it's humbling. It's humbling when you realize that we are just way down here, way down, way down. But what we who we have working for us is God the Holy Ghost who steps in on, our, in, our, in on our behalf, and when he talks for us, he brings us way up. We're back up to where we need to be, and the conversation is on point. Holy Spirit, thank you for your help. Thank you. Thank you. How else, how else do you explain the Lord answering prayers that we don't know to pray? I, look, uh, a few nights ago in, in, in Winston-Salem, I, I prayed as we dismissed. I said, God, give us traveling mercies and Lord, keep us. And oh, God, watch over us in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit said, uh, Father, he's praying all he knows to pray. Uh, but Barry and, and his wife over here, see, something's getting ready to happen. And there's going to be a collision. And, and really, intercessions need to be made for them. Now, they didn't pray for themselves because they didn't know it was going to happen. Matter of fact, unless they're told, you don't know what happened. Bam, you got hit. But the Spirit knew. And he makes intercessions on our behalf how many times have things worked out while we were looking over here it happened over there while we had our concentration in one place God the Holy Spirit said it's actually over here and you see the Lord moving and you go God what in the world that's our guy next time it happens say oh man God, the Holy Ghost, you did it again. You did it again. You interceded on my behalf because even though I was asking God all I knew to ask him. Notice, the book of Job is about a man asking all the wrong questions. And everybody in the book of Job came basically to the wrong conclusion except one man. Job came to all kinds of conclusions. People said Job never did sin. He didn't sin from chapter 1 and chapter 2. Read 3 and, and through 42. That's right. You find he's sinned quite a bit. It's amazing to me. You, you got to be an intellectual midget to, to read a verse in the, in the, at the end of the first chapter or the second chapter and assume that that verse speaks for the whole chapter. You got 40, you got 40 more verse chapters to go. Job never did sin. Not in the first or second chapter. Keep reading. You read what Elihu says, and Job in this thou didst sin. And he lays out his sin. You wouldn't have liked Job before God got through with him. He was the most self-righteous man you ever met in your life. Matter of fact, when he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. When I understood that, I stopped preaching it. Uh, mm, though he slay me, yet will I. No, Job was saying, 
I'm more righteous than God, for God is unfairly hitting me, but yet I'm going to trust him anyway. Now, do you really think that that's a good thing to say? You really think that's a good position to take? I don't deserve any of this, but the Lord is, he's hitting me, but I'm going to trust him anyhow. Aren't you glad God doesn't deal with us based on what we deserve? Because if we got what we deserve, we'd all be lost. There is none righteous, the Bible says. No, not one. Thank you for your help. Thank you for hope. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for the, the, the strength, the ability to keep going. And thank you, Lord, that when I ask all the wrong questions and, 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 and miss the point, <laughs> when I pray, thank you, Holy Spirit, for stepping in and saying, well, what he's trying to say or what he, what he needs to, what, what needs to be said to your father is, and then God works on our behalf. When you combine the promise of our glorification, the ministry of hope, the assistance of the Holy Spirit, and now we know that all things worketh together for the good to them that love the Lord. These are the things that he's talking about. These spiritual realities, they team up. The coming glorification, the ministry of hope, the work of the Holy Spirit. These things team up to cause good to come our way. Glory to God. And I thank God for the help. Would you praise him? Glory to God. Glory to God. Pray for me, preacher. Pray for me. I heard something today that blessed me. Glory to God. Pray for me. Pray that I keep my hope. Pray that I walk in this ministry. Pray for me. Pray that God. Hallelujah. If you're here and you want prayer, meet me at the altar. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Pray for me. I don't have to pray that the Holy Spirit continues to give the groanings which cannot be uttered because uh, that's like, a, that's like a, the heartbeat. That's an involuntary muscle. That happens. He's been doing that all my life. All my life. He was, doing, he was doing these things for me even when I didn't know. When I didn't understand the scripture. He was doing it nevertheless. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. He's so good. He's so good. He's so kind. He's wonderful. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. A brighter day is coming. A brighter day is coming. Joe's wife says, what? You still have your integrity? Curse God and die. Now, Joe was right that time. You talk like a foolish woman. <laughs> and I... <laughs> Don't you let anybody talk to you. But you still believing? You still worshiping? You still at the church? You still praising the Lord? Woo! You, you know what your answer should be? More so now than ever. My joy in the Lord is not abated. Neither is my hope in him. God of the Bible. God of the Bible. We come before you right now. We thank you today. But as we stand on the altar, 
we can see ourselves coming out. We can see, see ourselves being made better. For we have the belief in some good, something good coming our way and that somehow we will obtain it. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we stand before you, Lord. We stand before you and we thank you for the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now God, fill us. Hallelujah. With that spirit of optimism. With that hope that gets us up. With that hope that gives us strength. To continue in the things of God. And Father we embrace it. We thank you for it. We see these things working together. For our good. Oh God we love you Jesus. We love you Jesus. We love you. 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 Oh God, you set us up to succeed. You didn't set us up to fail. You set us up to succeed. For whom you did foreknow, you did predestinate to be conformed into the image of your sons. So you put all these things in place ahead of time so that we can make it, so that we can get through. All we got to do is know these things and grab hold of these spiritual realities in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we just praise you right now. We praise you right now. Praise him for the setup. Praise him for the setup. Praise him for setting you up to succeed. You have not been set up to fail. Somebody in here ought to glorify him. You have not been set up to fail. You've been set up to succeed. Glory to God. 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 be someone here who is not saved we will pray for you and Christ will save you if you're here and you're not saved and you don't know Jesus raise your hand and we'll take the time to lead you to the Lord hallelujah glory to God there may be someone here who is not filled with the Holy Ghost not filled with the Spirit Oh, you want the Holy Ghost at work in your life. Now, to be honest, what he describes here in the text, though, is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit on behalf of all believers. Because he tells in the, in the succeeding verses, for whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed into the image of his Son. And see, and he talks about how he justified us and all that. See, he set all these things in place, Celia, before you got saved. <laughs> set it all up. See, the Lord have not set up any of us to fail. If we fail, we fail despite him. If your marriage fails, it fails despite the Holy Spirit speaking on your behalf, the Holy Spirit telling the Lord how to pray. See, see you got to work hard to fail in, in, because you got to go against all the things that the Lord has going for you, all the things, hope, the the uh, the day of uh, reckoning when we're going to be glorified, all these things are in your favor. And if with all these you still find a way to 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 to, 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 to mess it up, you're good. Cause it takes a lot of work to ruin what the Lord had put in place. And I'll tell you, I'll identify the work. I'll tell you what it's called. It's called a hard heart. Hard 
hard-heartedness. Some of you, hard heart. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not going to get started. I'm not going down this road. Hard-heartedness will ruin you. Nobody's willing to budge. You won't give. You won't move. You you take you take more joy in standing your ground. I'm not talking about standing on scripture. I'm talking about standing your ground. God hadn't called us to stand our ground. God called us to stand on the word of God. And then sometimes uh, you gonna have to you gotta let this dawn on you next week. Sometimes in standing, you don't just stand on the letter, but you stand on the spirit of the law. Not it's not just the letter, but the spirit of the thing. See the the uh, the, uh, the Pharisees got caught up in the letter of the law for the Sabbath, but they didn't understand the spirit of the law for the Sabbath. If you get caught up in the letter of it, then you walk around on Sabbath day to see who's working. If you don't understand the spirit of the fast day, you walk around to see who's fasting and who's not. You, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're on the letter. But if you understand, understand the spirit of a thing, the spirit of the Sabbath was designed for us to rest in God, get restored so that we could go back and do the work. The, the, the spirit of a, a day set aside for fasting is so that saints will learn to consecrate and to have a disciplined life yes, sir. and to, uh, uh, to learn how to uh, go before the Lord. It was not designed for people to be each other's inspectors. I'm going to leave that alone. There's the letter, and there is the spirit of the thing. And so I thank God for the work of God. Now, Lord.